Hi, Javi. Um, I'm in my car. Just got a message from Roger Durling uh, asking if I would want to uh, honor you in some way uh, and be a surprise um, while they're honoring you this evening um, as a master, which you obviously are. Um, it was my great privilege and honor to work with you on Before Night Falls. I remember when we made the movie and you're so self-critical that I said to you when I wanted you to watch the film with me, I said, well, what do you think on a scale of one to 10? And you said to me, I think it's a four. My performance is a four. And I said, we're gonna sit here and watch this movie again because your performance is an 11. And I'm not surprised that you're nominated for the Academy Award again this year because your rendition of, of Desi Arnaz is extraordinary. And I know that you love to sing and dance and you got a chance to do both and also be serious uh, and add a level of gravity to his identity that I think is accurate. So uh, you have all my love and my respect. It was my really great uh, honor, privilege and opportunity to be so close to you and for us to do uh, Ronaldo Arenas' life together and um, it's an ongoing process um, we're going to make you're going to be Louis Bunuel and we're going to be we're going to make this movie uh, Bunuel Awake together and uh, and onward and upward if the world doesn't blow up you and me will still be there together and it can't with all our kids and all of the love that is surrounding us. So my best to you and congratulations. Enjoy this moment. Love you very, very much. Bye, Hobby. Nice. Good job. I have to call him. You're going to call him right now? I have to call him. Okay. <laughs> What's this, man? It's okay for you? It's okay for us. Okay. We're going to listen in on a phone call to Julian Schnabel. Okay. Maybe he's still in the car? <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Uh, it's, it's late in New York City, Javier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so selfish that I think everybody's on my time. <laughs> you know, like, who cares about anybody? <laughs> He can sleep some other time. Exactly. Who needs yeah. to sleep when I'm up? <laughs> <laughs> uh, did did the Cohen brothers uh, pitch you th that part, or did they have you read the novel? How did, how was it presented to you? My beautiful friend and uh, and, and and agent Elise Schertz was is here with us. She's uh, my guardian angel. She, she told me that the coins wanted to see me, and I, I, she knew that the first time they asked me in the States who you like to work with, I said, the Coen brothers. And then I read the script, and I said, what the hell is this? <laughs> I'll read the book to see if I understand anything. Mm -hmm. It was even worse. <laughs> I mean, Conor McCarthy is a genius, but it was like, it was so deeply American that he's like, I don't get it. <laughs> then I sat down with them, and they... They told me this story, and I said, well, listen, guys, I don't drive. I hate violence, and my English is not very good. And they said, that's why we want you. <laughs> I tried to say, I don't know if I can, I should do this. Then, thank God, for whatever reason, I said, well, try. Make it a try is the coins. Then I met them in New Mexico, and they did a haircut. And when I saw the haircut, I thought, we got a movie. <laughs> oh man! Because it's so Cohen Brothers, no? It's like yeah. the sinister character with that haircut. It's so Cohen Brothers that I kind of got it there. Like, okay. Oh my! It, it's so it's fascinating to me what triggers that moment, Absolutely. that moment of understanding. 
Great. Absolutely. That's just great. Now, watching that scene for us in the audience is incredibly tense. Incredible, palpable tension. What was it like to shoot? It was, uh, it, it is a long, it's the longest scene in the movie, the longest dialogue in the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked on that dialogue for months. It came the moment, and again, it was two takes, three takes. It's like, oh, give me more. <laughs> but I would say that this is a great example uh, of how little we are, the actors, without our colleagues. Mm -hmm. Meaning, I'm, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> Thank God everybody's wearing a mask on. Uh, but not me. Anyway. Uh, I wish I could remember the name, and I'm so sh ashamed not to do so. Oh, I'm sorry. The other actor is so brilliant in playing fear, insecurity, and expected situation that is doing my perform better. Because and that's a law that we all do as an actor. When you play a king, you don't need to just walk like a king. You walk normal. But then everybody around you treats you like a king. And then that makes you a king. Mm -hmm. When I walk in that sta gas station, I don't go with my threatening way of walking. I just walk. He makes the fear. Mm -hmm. His he makes you feel the fear. Javier, his name is Gene Jones. Gene Jones, right. Thank you. Brilliant. Brilliant actor. And, 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 uh, and, and it's, it, I think it's a very tense scene. And if, if you hear, there's a little bit of music on the, on, on the uh, beneath. The mm, is the only music in the whole movie. That mm, it's quite scary. Wow. <laughs> um, do you do you take your parts home with you? That one I took, and I call I killed many people in New Mexico. <laughs> I. A method. I went full method. Mm -hmm. I was walking around with my cattle gun. Uh, no, but it's true that I have to, to wear a hairnet because of the hair to be in that place for so long that it was so humiliating that I really wanted to kill someone. <laughs> uh, no, I, 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 when I was 20 years, 21, uh, yes, I would go method and I would like to be Brando and Mm -hmm. And I realized it was a waste of time and energy because I would do my better, my best scenes. It will be on the bathroom. Or my <laughs> best scenes will be walking on the streets with no camera rolling. So I said, why don't I try just to act when the camera is rolling? And uh, but listen, I do respect everybody's journey and, and process. Mine doesn't really need to be 24 hours in a character. Um, how much? How much do you? get from or want from your director? Nothing. I mean, if they leave me alone, it's even better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. I know there are many directors here. No. No, what do you want? More than directions that you need. You need vibe. You need a good vibe. Mm -hmm. You need respect. Not only towards you. That's easy. You're the star. It's easy. Towards everybody on the craft, on the crew, on the crew. Mm -hmm. Because the director's vibe is going to be the vibe that is going to rule that shooting for the rest of the shoot. Mm -hmm. And when there is something wrong going, because that person has some problems with their, his own ego or his own need of really um, uh, submitting his power or whatever, then the whole experience can be very damaged and can be very painful. I haven't, I've been lucky. I've never been maybe once, twice, but most of the times I have the chance to work with good people. They happen to be great directors, but most important, good people that were giving everybody their place, their room, and the respect that they all, they all deserve. Mm -hmm. When I asked if you took your, your roles home with you, we're about to watch a scene from Beautiful, which is a very tough movie. It's a very tough movie about a, a, a man in desperate straits. Uh, and, and I wonder if you could shake that off at the end of the day. That was a tough one, because that was six months holding that emotional state, 
and I guess it was the first movie that Alejandro González Iñárritu, which is a genius of a director, mm -hmm. uh, was doing with one character alone. Mm -hmm. Before that, it was always three stories tangled mm -hmm. among them. This was one story, one character to follow. And I guess it was tough for both of us to be able to maintain the, the emotional state for so long. Well, well, you did that. And then we're going to see... I keep, I keep reading people saying this is their favorite film of yours, their favorite part of yours, Skyfall. All right. And just last week, I, 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 uh, there was a screening of The Godfather on its 50th anniversary, and Francis Coppola spoke before this particular screening, and he said, a great movie's got to have a great bad guy. Right. Well, Skyfall has a great bad guy. <laughs> and, uh, and we'll talk more after we see the clip. First a clip from Beautiful, and then from Skyfall. <laughs> 